Ah, uh, this is a Ferris wheel. This is a snowboard. This is the slippery part of a water slide. And this is Leonardo da Vinci. But this is not a film about Leonardo da Vinci. This is a film about engineering. Manufacturers in a competitive field can't stand still. Those who dream in design are always contributing to our ways of work. The history and evolution of engineering roughly spans across seven key historical periods, three revolutions, and all the way back to 500 BC. It gave birth to the Renaissance man and the polymath. From the first ingeniators, scientists and artists, all the way to the modern day designer. Like the ones right here in Clerkenwell. I feel happy with shapes and color. But we'll get back to that. What started as elementary designs that were achieved through trial and error was quickly transformed by scientists asking deep questions about what and why. How do you know that it goes down this side and up this side? Well, I don't, Earl. We witnessed the building of the Acropolis, the Colosseum, Pharos of Alexandria, and the Great Wall of China. Oh, and then there was also Leonardo da Vinci. Brilliant guy, except he wasn't an engineer because the term didn't really exist then. Hmm. He was called Engineer Generale. Okay, in that case, interesting. Okay, interesting. So, so I'll change that. <laughs> An innovative thinker, planner, constructor, and designer. He worked with pen and craftsman's tools. He also drew upon mathematics, in particular topology and geometry. He also produced extraordinary designs of bridges, parachutes, helicopters, and gliders. He was a complete genius. But again, this isn't a film about Leonardo da Vinci. By 1666, Isaac Newton had extended the work of Galileo to introduce his three laws of motion. What Newton had yet to discover, and what he would spend the next two decades studying, was how those laws of motion related to the path of the moon around the Earth, and the Earth and other planets around the sun. That connection was made through his universal law of gravity. And then civil and mechanical engineers changed from practical craftsmen to scientific professionals, employing the latest understanding from thermodynamics and mathematics. Machines started to replace muscles, and the power of science enabled engineers to predict the behavior of their designs before ever being built. And then we had the information age. Things start to move more quickly and remarkable innovations started to appear. We had aerospace, computers, and wireless telecommunication. And Bell was sure that the same mechanism could also transmit speech. Then you have people like Claude Shannon, father of information theory. Fundamental concepts such as bits and bytes can be traced back to him. He discovered ways to make communication faster, satisfying an insatiable appetite for transmitting information across the globe. I am very seldom interested in applications, said Shannon. I am more interested in the elegance of the problem. So, where does that leave us? Let's fast forward a little bit further. Today, the best engineer in the world is a robot. He's not even a human being. The microchip unleashed a miniaturized technological revolution. Its simplicity and complexity allowed us to process masses of information and data in a single small unit, like this. Then we decided to go into space with the Apollo missions, bringing about further advances in electronics and engineering control. The Large Hadron Collider was built, and the Milar Viaduct designed and constructed, the tallest cable-stayed road bridge. I love bridges. I get very excited about bridges. The Mio Viaduct is, is very tall. I would guess it's got to be a couple of hundred metres. Mm, 200 metres? Uh, is it 400 metres? It's actually so high that the Eiffel Tower will stand underneath it. And then you have Ziegler, Rice, Chapman, Craig, Wozniak and Arab. Nov Arup was the engineer who inspired me. Again, he was an absolute visionary engineer. The person I would most have liked to collaborate with is David Bowie because I'm also a musician. And then you have City University of London. This is Clerkenwell then. This is Clerkenwell now. Clerkenwell, per square foot, has more creative designers of all disciplines than anywhere else in the world. Since 1894, City University of London has been situated at the heart of London, between Tech City and the Financial District. It's a buzzing hub for design. An innovator's playground, right in the center of one of the world's great capital cities. Home to the leading engineering practices, architects, and software designers. It is, it's a good, it's a good area to be in. 
Creativity is all about being bold enough to, to use your imagination. There's nothing more exciting than when you've got four or five people all chipping in with exciting ideas and you converge on a solution which is just perfect. So, how do you best harness the creativity without unique courses and course structure? We do it best here. Where are you headed?